you ever thought about starting your own podcast? We've got the information for you right here. And Dave's going to tell you about it. Absolutely, guys. We use this awesome application called Anchor FM. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First off, it's free. And who doesn't like free? Yeah, free is huge. That's what got us involved with it. Second of all, there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. So you don't need all those fancy gadgets. You can have them if you want them, but not absolutely necessary. Anchor will also distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and many other platforms. Which is great. More people can hear us. Who doesn't want more people to hear us? (laughs) I mean, I like to be heard. I like to talk. Another great thing is you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Like zero people could listen to you and you could still possibly make some money. That's amazing. How does that even happen? Uh, It's everything you need right here to make a podcast in one place. It's a one-stop shop and it's all you need. Anchor FM. Yeah, so you guys, if you want to start this podcast, go to anchorfm.com to get started. What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Apogee Podcast. My name is David Carter. And I'm Justin Bell. And we are recording on a Friday evening for y'all. I know. I think this is, this is a first. I feel like we need a, an, an adult beverage. I agree. I mean, you know? it's the end of the work week. We're actually at my work right now recording in my practice manager's office. <laughs> But, uh, is that, is this Jen's office? This is Jessica's office. Oh, this is Jessica's it office. It is. It is. But it's a nice little spot. Um, but yeah, it's been a good week. I've been looking forward to this podcast all week. Yeah, same. So, I mean, everyone heard our update show. Mm-hmm. So everyone should know who we have in today. Yeah. I'm excited personally because, you know, Kevin and I have known each other for five years. Six Ever years. Ever since Splits Belt started. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it's. You know, it's pretty cool to be able to have him on and to kind of see uh, how he's evolved in his career in, in the fitness industry and, and getting outside of the fitness industry with some of his talents. So, yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, I've seen him in and outside of competitions quite a bit since I moved here. Before we get into that, real quick, uh, quick shout out to sponsors. Uh, we've got CrossFit Greer still. Um, if you mention the Apogee podcast to them, Jenner Reagan, they will give you. 10% off your first month's membership. And then we've got uh, our good friend Chris Kane over at Blitz Belts throwing out a 15% off coupon with code all caps A P O G E E at um, at uh, checkout. The checkout where you, <laughs> where you give them your money. Yeah, right where that you thing. pay. That thing. So um, we're still waiting on, on Fit Aid. Yeah. So yeah, I hope you guys logged on to uh, Instagram and got on and to the Apogee podcast. Our little commercial. Yeah, that was completely unplanned, and I think that was back in. Gosh, that was November. that was in the open. Yeah, it was open. Thank God the open moved back to February, dude. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, All a right. lot of interesting information coming out from Mr. Eric Rosa. Did you watch the hour and twenty two minute? I did not video, but I'm planning on it tomorrow. I watched it in the shower today. Part of it, not all of it. How did that happen? I just I didn't in the shower. Else. I guess I didn't watch it. I listened to it on okay. my phone. <laughs> but uh, you got like some waterproof like, technology. Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> what I kind of bathroom box. do you have, bro? I got an otter box. No, I just, <laughs> I just you know put it on and it's like there's some interesting updates for CrossFit. And did you drink a beer in the shower while you were like, watching did, it? No, I don't get into the AM brewskis, so uh, I don't function. I'm not a functioning uh, mm-hmm. alcohol consumer. So, <laughs> yeah. all right, well let's get into it. Um, today, as we announced earlier this week, we have Kevin Harrington. Uh, formerly of Buckethead Media, um, we're gonna it's not get formally. I just oh, changed. Is it still, I just changed the name. He just changed the name. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's been involved in in the CrossFit uh, scene here in the local upstate for quite a while. He's done some awesome regional things uh, for CrossFit as far as photography. So, welcome to the show, Kevin. Thank you guys for having me on. Yeah, yeah man. Very absolutely. honored to be here. So, before we started recording, we were talking a little bit with Kevin. He said he actually hosted a podcast for a while yep um so obviously you've been on a podcast have quite a bit of experience and he podcasted before podcasting was cool yeah Yeah, that's the thing it's it's always the first person that gets eat up yeah Yeah, right (laughs) for three years i think two years for sure yeah you know it was me brandon chapin uh brandon simpson 
Dave Schlarb, and they brought me on to do Harrison's job. Sure. You yeah. know? And then I just got to the point where I just started talking to you. It's the, it's the biggest <laughs> job. It really yeah. is. We actually tried recording an episode once without Harrison, and it completely bombed. It's hard. So. You know, it's, you gotta <laughs> we didn't even air it. <laughs> make the levels right, get the echoes out, make yep. sure nobody's popping their peas. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was good. And it, then it, and well, then it the was actual, really bad. The actual conversation was great. Yeah. I wish we had recorded it well, but, you know. It we is. also did it in a cinder block room. They always say your first time's the worst, whatever you do in life. Yeah. Well, so that wasn't the first time. That, that was, was the first well, time I guess it was the first us, time. Yeah. That, yeah. So we, we realized how valuable Harrison was. We were was very lone wolves. Lonely. So we're grateful. Shout out, Harrison. All right. <laughs> um, Kevin, tell us a little bit about yourself, your upbringing, your education, all that stuff. Where are you from? I'm from Anderson, South Carolina. Born and raised all my life. I uh, want to fight about it, as we always <laughs> say. Um, <laughs> I grew up in Homeland Park, which is, uh, it's it's kind of like the other side of the tracks. But to me, it was home, you know. I sure. grew up there. I still love it, you know. Um, I go by my house, you know, at least once a year just to see it, mm-hmm. you know. But it is what it is, you know. There, you know, factories pulled out, you know, it was a factory town, sure. factory part of town. So, and the economy went down. And so, you know, everybody, and everybody started moving to the other side of Anderson. Sure. So. But, you know, from there, you know, I just, you know, I went to West Side. From there, I went to Tri-County Tech. And I got my degree in radio and TV broadcasting. Okay, cool. So. Many moons ago? Many moons ago. 2005. 2005. All yeah. right, cool. Uh, did you play any sports growing up? I played a little bit of football. I played a little bit of soccer. I played a little bit of wrestling. Sure. You know, but I knew then I wasn't really going to be great. And I wasn't really going to go anywhere. My biggest thing was I was a swimmer. I swam um, from the time I was in elementary school till my sophomore year in high school. Swimming was a great sport. And we didn't have swimming as a competitive uh-huh. in high school sports. Because back then, high school sports was just football, basketball, wrestling, soccer. Sure. Baseball, you know, and that yeah. was it. So I was like, well, you know, I'm not going to, there's no need to. There's no glory in this, in my <laughs> mind. I'm into competitive floating. I float really well, but I can't. When I start moving my arms and my legs, I sink. It's crazy. You gotta move your arms and legs. I know. <laughs> it's amazing, though. It's amazing because with all everybody around here doing the wads and they add swimming into it, it is amazing to see that hole in some people's fitness. Oh, yeah. It's huge. You know? a lot and to me, things. it's like if I see it on a workout, I'm like, that's the one thing I'd be great at. Yep. What's I'm amazing is way. how many athletes have anxiety over swimming. Yep. You know, like, oh my gosh. A lot of people hate open water swimming. Well, well that's totally, totally different, different than a pool. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Totally, totally different animal. Yeah. So Kayla swam competitively. She's yeah. a really good swimmer. Yeah. And like watching watching her workouts, I love it. Yeah. For more ways than I'll say on air. But <laughs> watching her swim is a thing of beauty. I mean, it really it's, it's, is. You, it, it is. It's one of those things that you have to, your finger comes out one way and it goes in the, an opposite way of the water. Mm-hmm. You know, it's all how you pull underneath the water. It is. You know, it's it's how you pull when you're on your back. My thing is I always hated being on my back, mm-hmm. you know, because then I would, but then it got to where I would count from the flag how many strokes it was mm-hmm. to the ball. Mm-hmm. And so then it became a strength. Yeah, I was a swimmer. I started swimming when I was five and I was actually very good. I, I went to state a couple times as a preteen and mm-hmm. early teen, but then I hit ninth grade and I stayed about five, six. Yeah. And everybody swimming's not for short people. I'm five ten, so it's not for short people. Yeah, so it was Did uh, you swim three sixty like round year, I short did. course, I was, long it, course? I was a big swimmer, um, and soccer. So yeah. and soccer kind of took over after swimming, but um yeah, I totally get I still love swimming. I try to get to a pool once in a while. I'm I'd like to get back into it. I would too. The beast mode in Powdersville, they're opening up their brand new facility, um, I think in October. Mm. And they built their facility right in conjunction with the pool so they yeah. can do swimming wads. So hopefully they throw Any a, YMCA that has a CrossFit gym, they have the access to the pool. Right. But the thing is, they're so far away from each other. It's not like you can just Hard jump right in. in. But in this True. Powdersville one, literally you can just jump right in. Right into it, yeah. Yeah, so it's going to be perfect. I hope they throw a competition there. No, that'd be sweet. Yeah, for sure. Um, So you've been... In the CrossFit community for quite some time now, and everybody knows you as the photographer. We'll get to that part, mm. but I want to know how you actually found CrossFit first. Uh, me and my wife um, were going to we were eating dinner at a place called Northampton Wines, mm-hmm. and Dave Schlarb was a waiter there, and I thought he looked cool. You know, I was like, "Hey, who's this dude? He's got the hipster glasses on. He's got the 
mean, that's where I got my hairdo from. Because yeah. I, I just thought it was a great hair. Yeah. Cut. I was like, it's classic, you know, and everything. And so we just kind of began to get a rapport together. Mm-hmm. And so finally one day he was like, hey, we're going to open up a gym at Southern Moon. You know, and this is back in October of 2012. And I was like, okay, hey, that's cool. You know, I hear, I hear that's some kind of workout everybody does. And I was like, oh, yeah, run up a gym. You should come be a member. And I was like, ah, eh, you know, I didn't really, I w- it wasn't my thing at the time. I didn't, mm-hmm. wasn't really sure. But he never stopped prodding me, he, you know, every day, every day for like the next three months. And then finally I relented and I said, it was in December. I said, okay, fine, I'll come. And I just, I, I went, I fell in love with it like everybody else does it. You know, it hurt like hell. Yeah. You know, when you get your first workout in because you're doing air squats, push-ups, and sit-ups. That's all you mm-hmm. do. Mm-hmm. Sure. You know, and that, and you think, oh, man, I'm doing CrossFit and everything. And you're like, this is horrible. Yeah. yeah. You know, but the next day you just show up again and you just, you get over the pain. And so that's, I've been doing it since, you know, 2012, December of 2012. See, so you and your wife, you, you shot me a video mm-hmm. uh, a couple days ago in the DMs and it was you and your wife's kind of fitness journey. Mm-hmm. Can you go a little bit into that? Um, I had ballooned up to the point of 315 pounds. Um, severely unhealthy. I was on uh, blood pressure pills. I was taking pre-diabetic pills. Um, and I just knew that at that point I was like, there's no way mm-hmm. that this is sustainable in and of itself. Right. You yeah. know, because my grandfather had diabetes, my mom had diabetes. And I was in that vein that I was going to have it too. Right. And I was just like, can't do this. And there was a picture that we, me and my wife went to, uh, for Christmas, we went to um, the Biltmore. Mm-hmm. And they took a picture of us. And it's in the video at the very end. And if I looked at it and I just saw it. I was like, I just, I failed myself. I was just so uncomfortable. You know, so I just, I, I told Dave, I was like, all right, I'll come, I'll do it. You know, and so that's just, and... I got down to my lowest I've ever been in CrossFit was 237, wow. I think. Mm-hmm. That's you huge. Know? And then I got over into Olympic lifting and I got down to one, I got to like the 95 weight class or whatever, or the 105, 105 not the 105 plus. I was lifting 105 plus, sure. but I got to legitimate 105. And I competed in one event for Olympic lifting at Muscle Driver when it was mm-hmm. up in Charlotte. Mm-hmm. And I literally looked at those guys that were my weight group and my age, and I was like, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. there's no way. And then it, I reinforced it. I went and shot, uh, it was a uh, USA weightlifting meet in Miami for goat tape. And Pierce Demas was there. He was, when he, that's when he started coaching with USA weightlifting. And I watched those guys, and I'm like, there's no way. You know, you have to literally have spent your entire life mm-hmm. doing this. Oh, 100%. Yeah, it's, yeah, and that's, I think that's one of the things, like if you, if you watch people who are really good at weightlifting in CrossFit, mm-hmm. so actually, um, gosh, what's her name? Her last name's Wu. I watch her videos all the time. She's a weightlifting coach. And she's actually breaking down a lot of your top competitors, mm-hmm. clean and jerks and snatches. And it's funny, because it's like, you look at Tia Toomey, it's like, yeah. man, she's a... She's a great weightlifter. And then you have someone who actually weightlifts break down. And it's like, oh, wow, I would have never picked up on if that. If you look at it, a lot of the reasons why you had East German, you had Russia, and you had China. So they were state owned weightlifting mm-hmm. groups. So they would adopt a kid, put him in the system. You know, we talked about this on our podcast. You'd put him in the system, you know, and for one year, you'd stay at one weight. Mm-hmm. In America, especially in CrossFit it's like hey I want to okay I just lifted one nine, I just lifted 95 pounds yep. let me throw on yeah. 135 let me so you your time under tension is not exponentially as more as it should be sure mm-hmm. right. you know you're not getting the muscle memory where you need to groove that snatch or that clean and jerk every mm-hmm. day we just want to keep doing more and more and more and more right for sure get that PR and so I think that's where we fail as far as CrossFit goes when it comes to Olympic lifting you know we don't te- I mean we teach the movement, mm-hmm. you know, but you've got some people, they don't, they do the weight and they're not sure about the weight and it shows and they starfish and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's like, and I'll look at somebody and I'm like, well, you just need to go do pulls, mm-hmm. you know, get used to what that weight feels like in your hand. That's the thing, man. People have such a hard time breaking down the movements. Like it's not, it's not sexy. It's very boring, you know, working on hand placement, working on pulling, working on just front squatting in general. 
um, working well, on about, getting. Think about the world today, though, man. Yeah. Like, I mean, if you want food, someone will go pick that food yeah. up and they'll yeah. deliver it to you yeah. in 30 minutes. You're I mean, right. It is, we are a generation now. We want it ASAP. We want it yesterday. You know, and it, it there's no difference in uh, in in the in the CrossFit realm or really any other Anything. realm. I yep. mean, I look, I I manage um, a couple of really young guys um, in my everyday job, and they're constantly, "What's next? What's next? Yeah. What's mm-hmm. next?" And I say, "Hey, look, man, just <laughs> spend some time where you're at and try to enjoy what you're doing mm-hmm. and try to take the opportunity to learn because life I mean, comes you at and, you fast." I mean, but I mean, you see it too in your medical field. I mean, you That's, get somebody in here and you're like, oh, "I want to feel good now." Well, that's the biggest thing. Um, I that's a whole nother topic. Right. What you just said, <laughs> but uh, we can talk about that later if you want to. But what I was gonna say is, I think that people are like, oh, people who are outside of CrossFit, they're like, man, I just think that people are just gonna get so injured doing that, you know. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. People are gonna get injured doing CrossFit if they don't have the right coach breaking it down for them and actually coaching them and teaching them. How to do things appropriately and part of that is breaking down each movement section by section making sure they master it before they let their clients or their their um, people at their gym their gym members um, move on to like the next step I feel like that that's kind of neglected at a lot of gyms that I've seen and that that could be easily avoided and that should be something that should be covered in fundamental classes I think when people first join the gym like these are my expectations as a gym owner. You're coming into my gym, and this is how I really think things should go. Right. Because the last thing we want to see you progress, we want to see you get stronger. That doesn't happen overnight. I think You're, that's more now than when it began. Yep. I sure. know in 2013 when I started there, yep. there was no like, it was there was no on road classes. There sure. were no like, hey, you're going to come do this for six weeks before mm-hmm. we let you into a class. Just jump I went on, straight yeah. to a class. Right. But in the same respect, it was a brand new gym. Right. That gym, Southern Moon, had only been open since August. Right. So everybody in there was new. It wasn't like there was some kind of ego in the gym. Right. It wasn't like there was this big muscle bound guy that could snatch 250 and look right. at him and you're like, I, I'm going to walk out. <laughs> everybody was growing at the same right. time. Mm-hmm. Everybody was pushing everybody at the same time. Yeah. So that's just my message to current uh, gym owners. <laughs> I, I always think, as far as programming, um, I think sometimes you shouldn't put an RX weight. I think you should put a weight, a suggested weight. Yeah. But you know, when you go to put it in sugar wad, you're going to either have to pick RX or, or scaled. You know, and for me, for a long time, I always hated I scaled. I did it scaled. I did it scaled. Wow. And I had to learn yeah. Yeah. that you're still doing it. Right. You've gotten out of the bed, you're in the gym, you're doing something. Well, I think that comes back to, you know, understanding why you're doing what you're doing. And mm-hmm. I think that a lot of times people's perspectives are um, out of line with what their expectations should be for their, based on their fitness level. Of course. Right? I mean, and that's one of the hard parts about going into a gym and you, you work out with someone who's a regional level athlete and it's like, like I, I thought at one point I was going to go to regionals because mm-hmm. I'm, you know, I was collegiate level athlete. Yeah. You know, had played baseball. Felt like all I I had all the skills, but you watch someone who is extraordinary at fitness, like a Hudson or like a Josh, and you see how effortless things are. And because they look so effortless, you think, oh well, that's easy, you know. But you don't understand what all really goes on behind the scenes. So, what is it like the ten thousand rule? If you do something ten thousand, is it ten thousand? Yeah, ten thousand. Yeah, ten thousand repetitions. Ten thousand repetitions, and you become kind of like a yeah, master of that for sure. You know, it's like when, when Goat Tape sent me out to do a, a tour of our athletes. Uh, I went to CrossFit Mayhem. I went to go shoot Lindy Barber and mm-hmm. Ron Ortiz and Angelo DiCicco for um, that year that Tia Toomey won the first championship. And yep. Tia Toomey was there and all the all of them were there. And to watch those guys just after everything was done, it was amazing. They, mm-hmm. you know, they... You know, people do two a days. These guys are doing three a days like it was nothing. Yeah, they train yeah. all day. You know, because that's their job. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. You know, so I want to go back to, I want to go back to the weight loss piece because I think that's, I'm sure that's something that you probably like. CrossFit holds a certain um, level of, um, I don't know, man, personal affection for you because of your weight loss journey and what it did for you. So tell us a little bit about that. I think it's one of those things where you surprise yourself. 
you know, you were mentioning about, you know, oh, well, I was a college level athlete. I think I can go to regionals and stuff. I think anybody who joins CrossFit, they have the visions of glory. Mm -hmm. You know, visions like, oh, of grandeur. I can, I can do this. I can be great. I can, I can do this. And then it, they get hit pretty hard in the face and they realize, no, can't do this. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to be Hudson. I'm not going to be that person. So they start to focus on themselves. And I think that's where you grow. Mm -hmm. I think once you get past the idea that, this is more about me than, cause I'm not gonna go to regionals. I'm not gonna be Rich Froney. I'm not gonna be, you know, Hudson Fricky. I'm not gonna be, name the high level person in your gym. Sure. You know, and then you look at that person because you think, oh, that's who I'm gonna be. You're not gonna be that person. You know, Hudson always tells us at the beginning of the open every year, he goes, just do it. Cause none of y'all are going to the regionals or none mm -hmm. of you, you know, that's what he would tell us. And mm -hmm. that's the hard truth. And a lot of right. people don't understand that. But where the weight loss comes in, was you know I we I weighed 315 pounds so if I did any kind of movement I was going to lose weight I knew that because I swam for so long mm -hmm. you know I, I knew I knew that movement you know junk in junk out I knew what I needed to do sure yeah. and so I just got to the point where you know I start we started doing the paleo diet you know I cut out me and Aaron basically went through the whole kitchen threw out all the carbs you know like the bread and stuff and and we just did that and you know we lost. I came 315, I think, uh, four months, five, six months into it, I was down to 265 maybe, Wow. you know? You know, the, by the time we did that video, you know, we lost, between us combined, we lost a 14-year-old. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's and Hudson says in the video, it's like, you know, they have they know what it's like to be there. They know what it's like to get up and, mm -hmm. and haul that, all that extra weight. And it's, I think CrossFit, it, for me, it saved my life. Mm-hmm. You know, if, uh, I'm thankful for Dave and Hudson for putting me in that group of people, mm -hmm. you know, because it is your tribe. I mean, CrossFit Greer for you guys, that's your home that, yeah. you know, you can never mm -hmm. think of going anywhere. Where do you, I don't know where you, same, same CrossFit you know, Greer, I mean, yeah. it's, so it's, you know, you got Jen and Reagan over there and they mm -hmm. cultivate that and I love them to death too, right? you know, and, and they cultivate that kind of culture and, and everybody takes care of everybody, mm -hmm. you know, same with Swamp Rabbit, same with Reaction. You know, same with CrossFit Simpsonville. Really, that's the, it's a culture. You know, that's why everybody knows everybody here in the upstate. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you say, you know me when you see me. It's like because I've probably shot everybody here. Mm -hmm. You know, I know how they move. I, I've spoken with them. You know, I've so it's a culture. You get to meet everybody. You get to know everybody. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, and the problem I would always have would be like I would talk to my friends like, hey, let's go do CrossFit. Oh, I'll do it when I get in shape. <laughs> How many times have you that's, heard that's, that, right? That's, that's yeah. the I always classic laugh when line. I hear that. Yeah, that's, that's everybody. <laughs> that's, that's the thing. That's what CrossFit's for. It's to get you in shape. Well, that's the thing, man. I mean, even when I started CrossFit, I thought I was in excellent shape, you yeah. know? And I, I was in good shape, you know? I had probably the best looking body I ever had. Yeah, and one fat to fast but, fitness, right? Exactly. But then going into a CrossFit gym, I had never done a handstand push-up in my life. And it was twenty one fifteen nine squat cleans at like ninety five, and handstand push ups. And I always thought those were cool. I still think they're cool. That was the one thing I wanted to learn. I mean, I had done cleans before, but I never put them into a squat. But I never mm -hmm. even hell, I even squatted. Period. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like doing ninety five into a squat clean killed me, and then a handstand push up. What are those? I had to go to a box. You know, what's well, like for me in high position. school, you know, I graduated in 92. And so, you know, we had the high school gym and we had the yeah. weight room for the football players and stuff. We didn't know what we were doing. Yeah. You know, we were doing back squats and they always told us when you do a back squat, make sure you look up. Yep. Mm -hmm. Same. Well, why? Yep. Why, do you know why they tell you to do that or why, what the, I don't know. I mean, that's, I've never, I don't teach. I'm going to tell you medically what they say. Look up when you're, when you come up because for men, you could rip your scrotum. Oh, right. that's really? The, that's the rumor I've they always heard told us that. in gym that. They never didn't say it that, that nicer terms, but. Mm -hmm. Interesting. You know, I was, was taught like, that. Always look up because, you know, you're going to. I was like, taught right. that when I was in, you know, high school as well with strength and conditioning, you know, look up when you squat and deadlift, but it was never because of the scrotum. Uh, but do you do that now? But no. I, no, you don't. Know, because no. that's no, because when you look we know, up, we your head's right. here, yeah. your neck's out of alignment. So. Everything about high school strength and conditioning is so backwards, um, well, at least back in the day. Well, they didn't know about it. Yeah. Now, I mean, so it's funny. I was talking to um, a good friend of mine, Zach McCarthy. He just took the head strength and conditioning position at a... Uh, a school in Greer and we were just chit-chatting and talking about 
you know, my baseball coach in high school did mm-hmm. all of our strength and conditioning. He, he was programmed it for us. He gave it to our weightlifting coach. Mm-hmm. And that's the way it was. We followed that. Yeah. You know, now high schools are, are more sophisticated. They have a strength and conditioning coach coordinator who coordinates the strength for all the sports. They're on ESPN now. Yep. Oh, absolutely. So it's very, very different ball game. Oh, right. So, yep. you know, and, and, and that's great. You know, and it's, it's neat seeing you know, high school kids come in and obviously there are things that they need to work on, but it's not as bad as it used to be. It's not as Very bad true. as like mm-hmm. I was when we were in high school. Yeah, for yeah, you sure. You had like a bench, you had a bench that the head was worn out because somebody's We still head. have those, man. We well, gotta have was, those. We had like, like that quarter inch pad. <laughs> yeah. Not like the Thompson fat pads now or yeah. anything like that. Yeah. That's All so right. Funny. So I, I don't think about Southern Moon without thinking about you, Dave and Hud. You know, but... When I think about thank you, I appreciate when I that. think about you, I think about Buckethead Media. I remember your first logo when it first came out, and I was like, "What in the world is this guy doing?" And uh, so, tell us, tell us where you came up with uh, Buckethead Media, and what really made you want to jump into photography, and you know, kind of take us along the road to where you're at today. Well, um, Buckethead Media came out of it was just in high school they used to call me Buckethead because I have a big head. You do not gonna lie. I have, you have a, a huge, rather large head. I have a large head, but I'm also a rather. I have a big frame, but uh, you know the kids would always tease you. You know they bully. Hey, you got your head as big as a bucket. Buckethead. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, even the high school coaches came to us. Said me and another friend of mine, Jermaine Swillis. He's like, we bought two brand new football helmets. They're double extra large. You guys will have new football helmets. And I was like. Is that how you're going to sell me football? We bought you a brand new football helmet just to come play. <laughs> so, I mean, it just kind of sort of came out of that. I mean, I couldn't think. I mean, I was like, what am I going to name it? What am I going to name it? What am I going to name it? And I was like, well, everybody in Anderson that I went to high school with knows me. They would call me Buckethead. And you get over that as time goes on. Mm-hmm, of course. So I just called it Buckethead Media. And my friend's like, that sounds like an art house company. I was like, well, that's what I'm going to go with. Yeah. You know, and so I just, I did that. It was different. It was unique. Um I got into doing the photos after the Greenville games when they had it way out there mm-hmm. um, because I they were doing, taking pictures and I wanted to see my pictures, you know, and and so I didn't think that I could do better. I just, I went to school for it, you know, it was my degree and I'm like, I'm not going to do radio, you know, I'm not going to, I don't have a face for TV, you know, and so I, w- I said, well, what can I do? I'll do film, I'll do, I'll do digital. And so, you know, in school, I mean, I never took a digital photo class. I learned film. I can develop film. I can develop color film. I can do black and whites. Sure. You know, awesome. I know how to do that. Mm-hmm. And, I, you know, I've, I've taught myself digital, but that's not hard. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. I mean, it is hard, but it's not hard. Um, but I just, it was just something, I knew that I was never going to be a regionals guy. I knew, I knew I was never going to be a Hudson. Everything always goes back to him. I was just never going to be that guy. Mm-hmm. And I had fallen in love with CrossFit that I wanted to be more in it and involved in it. And so the only way that I knew that I could do it to offer any kind of thing was to just do quality photos. Yeah. So at that you know, point, had you been taking pictures of like other venues or was that your first, is that when you first really picked up that camera? I know you did it in college and stuff, but. You know, I put the camera down for a very long time. Well, I went to college yeah. and I, I worked at a CBS in Tacoa and then the recession hit. And so I just kind of sort of came home and got fat. You know, I didn't, I, I had a kit camera, didn't like it. It was a micro four thirds at Olympus. You know, and that's that's a gateway drug for a lot of people. And I just wanted something different. I wanted a better camera. I wanted a better equipment. And mm-hmm. so I went out there and did it and got it. And it's a learning process. It's it's people, you know, Harrison will tell you this. When, you know, you're, you're over here turning dials and knobs and people look at you like, oh, you're just pressing a button. Yeah, I'm just pressing a button. That's the first part of it. You know, when it comes to a camera, it's it's all about how many shutters releases can I put on this camera? Cameras are rated by shutter release, like a car on mileage. So if I have a $4,000 camera that's rated at 200,000 or 150,000 shutter speeds, I mean shutter releases, I have to go and divide that number into what's on the shutter. And that's that's basically the lowest you would charge for a photo. And you've already lost me. Well, I, I, <laughs> it's so I, I, complicated. I mean, it's, <laughs> it, it's just... You wouldn't know, though. The average person has no yeah, idea they don't about know. that. You know, it's, it's like you go, you shoot an event, you know, and you've shot 3,000 photos. Now i got to go home. I've got to cull through those. Mm-hmm. 
and give you the ones that you need. And then I've got to go through and edit those. I've got to store them. It's, it's a big fun adventure. I yeah. kind of lost myself too. But I mean, I just, it's, it's something that I thought I could offer. Yeah. And people liked it. You know, they asked me to come back, you know, and I, I was, I would come do it, you know? And, and then one time, um, I started putting stuff out on, you know, obviously Instagrams and stuff. You know, and Christopher Kane over there, you guys started Blitz Belt and you were like, hey, why don't you come, mm -hmm. you know, help us out and do some media for us and stuff. Promotion. And I was like, sure, you know, you know, like really, truly the first commercial really photo shoot that I did was with Asa Brown at Reaction, you know, and Asa mm -hmm. Brown worked himself to death. And I'm like, dude, you don't have to do that. It's just, mm -hmm. it's a photo shot. You don't have to keep working look out. Like you're working yeah. out. Yeah. yeah. And it's just, Let's that just was the first one. The yeah. <laughs> and then it just kind of went on from there, you know, and then I did the first videos for the, uh, the belts, yep, the black sheep, the black sheep. And we did the, uh, videos we did, we did them at reaction and black sheep. Yep. And it was like, Oh my God, who's oh, getting into the blue, right. who's it. getting into the blitz belts and I what's this a, all about I deadlift and, PR reaction that day. That and was it's awesome. just, it's, you do that kind of stuff and it just draws you in. And mm -hmm. then, so then I got the great idea that I really, I really have a big fan of goat tape. Um, I use them to this day. And at that time, Chris was using them. He was getting Blitz Belt branded goat tape. Well, actually, it wasn't Blitz. It was Pachyderm. Pachyderm, yeah, PSG. And he was getting branded tape. So he put me in contact with them. And I was like, I didn't even know who they were. I just knew they were a tape company. And so I sent him that video. And I was like, hey, I'd really like to shoot for you guys. I would put stuff on Instagram based around them and stuff and shot in the dark. And then they were like, sure, we'd love for you to come shoot first too. And I was like, wow, great. You know? <laughs> This is awesome. Sure. <laughs> well, little did I know who they were. Uh, Go tape is owned by the Coonharts. Teddy and uh, Teddy, Ted Coonhart. It's the Coonharts. If you're familiar with Coonhart Films, um, they did uh, they did the DNC Barack Obama's um, the last year of the DNC when he last year wow. of his presidency. They did that video. So how wow. they, they did the, uh, tape? the two sons were doing CrossFit in New York, and they got into it. And they were trying to figure out how to make a better tape, a more waterproof tape. And so basically what they did was they came up with it, they sourced it, and they called it goat tape because their idea was, you know, let's give back to the community before it was all fashionable. Mm -hmm. So you they would you could buy a goat and send it to a you know a, a village so they could get the milk and the and all that kind of stuff. And so it was just called goat tape. That's awesome. Okay. I so, had no idea. Yeah. I had no idea. I thought it was just the greatest of all time tape. It is honestly great. well. A lot, <laughs> of, a lot of people say that too, but it really that's that's what their premise was. Was like, hey, we want to give back, you know, you know, and and we want to make a great tape that's waterproof that doesn't come off like the Ace tapes used to do and stuff. And so, and I absolutely loved it. Chris was always feeding me my stuff, and I was mm -hmm. like, he's like, we well, here call these guys. Yeah. I was like, all right. So I called them and they let me work with them, and I was like, and then I found out who they were, and I just kind of felt really bad. I was like, I sent them that video, and these guys. You know, they're Emmy winning, you know, they've won several awards. I mean, well, it was good enough to where yeah. they said, well, hey, yeah, come I on know, over. I know. Well, that's so I, awesome. I think that's in life in general. I think a, a good lesson that people can learn from you is, you know, to really, to really try to dig into what their skills are and what their gifts are and find a way to use those um, and find a way to use them for good. You have to. Hey guys, have you all ever thought about possibly doing your own podcast? Well, We've got something for you that will make it a lot easier. We use this really, really neat application to record called Anchor FM. David, why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Sure. Uh, yeah, guys, if you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First off, it's free. That was probably the number one winner for us right there. Yeah, free's big. Free's good. Um, second thing is there's creation creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. So you don't need all the fancy gadgets. You can have them if you want, but not absolutely necessary. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you. So it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. For example, our podcast, I believe, is on eight different platforms, which is great. More people can hear us. <laughs> At least we think that's great. <laughs> you can make money for your podcast with no minimum li listenership. And it's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So you don't have to go to all these different websites to put things together. It's all right here for you. And did I mention it's free? It's free, y'all. So yeah, if you have any aspiration to start a podcast, you should start by going to Anchor FM. 
Yep, go to Anchor FM, download the free Anchor app, or go to anchor.fm to get started. So, you know, looking down the road, what's next for Kevin Harrington Images? Well, um, I'm going to talk about this real quick. I wasn't sure. If you had asked me this two years ago, or three years ago, I wasn't sure. Mm-hmm. Um, because I had a seizure at Wadapalooza the last time I went down there. I had It was when Clemson had won the national championship, and I drove down. I didn't sleep well that night. I loaded up the Toreg, drove down the very next day. 12-hour drive, didn't stop, because I don't eat a lot. I mean, mm-hmm. I look like I do, but I have I have crappy way I eat. So I was very excited, got there. Once I got into Miami and everything, I'm texting Jay Knickerbocker and all my friends, like, hey, okay, we're going to go over to the Chessie place because they're still putting the, the thing together and building all that. So I went over there. And then basically I'm standing there for like five minutes. We're talking and everything. It starts raining. So we all come into like a little cubby area and somebody hands me a, a double shot espresso. Now I haven't eaten anything. I haven't really drank anything. And then I started having like this thing. I could feel it coming on. And then I woke up on the back seat of an ambulance, like the, wow. like the tailgate. And they were like, have you ever had a seizure before? Is this your, I was like, what, what, what? And they're like, you just, you know, you had a seizure and everything. And I'm like, I've never had them before. You know, I've never, this is not something that's normal. You know, I have ADHD. I take, you know, I take a Vyvanse, you know, I take <laughs> Lexa, I take a Vyvanse, I take Prozac, you know, but I've never had this kind of thing before. And mm-hmm. they're like, yeah, you had a seizure. And I was like, all right. They're like, you look fine. So they left me on my own. So Aaron drove down the very next day. And so it, it they didn't take my driver's license away. They don't do that. So I just kind of went on. I didn't bother going to see a neurologist. I did have a CT scan because we were friends with this guy who owns a CT scan. Mm-hmm. So I came back fine. You know, I did the whole optic thing where they're like, the flash of lights are like, well, you do photography. Let's do that. That all came back normal. Mm-hmm. So they couldn't really tell me other than you have anxiety, you're excited, and your brain just misfired. I was like, mm-hmm. all right, fine. And that, that was all it was. So I always, so then I would start to like have small ones and I was like, all right, it's whatever. And then one day about three years ago, about three and a half years ago, I was leaving Southern Moon and I went to Costco. It was 4th of July weekend and I went and picked up like ribs, you know, mm-hmm. I was going to be Fred Flintstone for sure. the weekend, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, and I got off the phone and I'm leaving to go down for a day and I felt it coming on and I've never had one in a car before. And so I got into the far lane. And the last thing I remember, and that's the last thing I remember. Next thing I remember is I woke up in the back of an ambulance. Mm. And I was like, what's going on? And then I had two more in the back of the ambulance. They were more like shock seizures, like you're in a state of shock. I basically went across four lanes of the road, hit a pine tree right before uh, Verde, like when you go on to Verde. I, mm-hmm. I actually made the turn. I remember it coming on, I was pulling off. But after that, I woke up. So I drove, I made it to the red light. I made the left-hand turn, but then... I went across four lanes of the road and hit a tree. Didn't hit anybody else. Wow. Oh, man. The only thing I did, I think, I didn't break my finger, but I hit the, uh, because when you, when you have a seizure, you tense up. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I basically held on and I think what happened was my hand slipped off and basically hit the window because there's like a crack there. I didn't break it. And so I was in the hospital for two days, really a day and a half. Because once I got there and once I was fine, I was like, I got a video where I'm like doing this with my feet and everything. I've got the nasal cannula and everything. So they're like, you're fine. They took me up for an MRI. They're like, your head's fine. There's nothing wrong with your brain. I said, I have a brain, you know, that kind of stuff. (laughs) Right. That funny joke. And then they're like, yeah, you know, we just, we just think you had a misfire. And I'm like, all right, fine. So then they made me go see a neurologist. And I was like, all right. And they said, well, you can't drive for six months. I was like, what? Yeah, you can't drive for six months. And I'm just like, in this day and age, that is so crushing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mind numbingly, business numbingly crushing. And um, I was like, all right. And so they put me on Kepra, which I still take to this day. I don't think I'll ever get off Kepra. Not because I can't. It's because I don't want to. Mm-hmm. I don't want to have another seizure. Even even if it's nothing wrong with me, I just don't want to have that happen mm-hmm. again. Um. And it's been the best, it's been the best and worst part of my life. You know, I told you, I was like for two years, you know, I left Southern, I got, what it was, was I got, I got, I took it kind of personal 
Like nobody, nobody came to see me in the hospital. My wife was there, mm-hmm. you know, my house cleaner came to say hey to me, you know, but nobody else came to see me. And so I kind of, I kind of took that personal and I shouldn't have, mm-hmm. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have held those type of people accountable for that if I wasn't willing to hold myself up to that kind of accountability, mm-hmm. you know? And so for two years, I just kind of, I left Southern Moon. You know, I was like, I'm driving up here every day. I can't be driving. And Hudson said, hey, we'll come down and get you. And I live in Anderson. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked about this. That's that's a good 30 minutes away. And I didn't want to be, I didn't want to oblige somebody to have to put them out to come pick me up to take me back home. And I just didn't want to do that. And so I was just kind of like, so I I left there. I went to Electric City CrossFit for a while. I signed up there. I kind of drifted in and out. I wasn't very on time because it's a whole new gym. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's learning all that over again. It's learning everybody. And then I went to, uh, I did the AAYMCA CrossFit competition. I shot that and I worked out. I said, Hey, if I come shoot it, can you do me a membership? Cause they were just Mm -hmm. down the street. Yeah, sure, sure. So I did that. I didn't, you know, it's not that I didn't fit in well there either. I just, I got to the point where I was seeing how coaching was done. And I was like, this is how it, you know, and I was just very frustrated. Mm Mm-hmm. And then finally one day I just said, I, I called Hudson on the phone. I was like, I just kind of want to come back. <laughs> I miss He's you. He's like, it's like, come on. Yeah. You know, and I don't regret that. I think what happened was for two years, I basically had quit on myself. Mm-hmm. You know, I gained weight back. Um, and I just, it just got to the point where I didn't fit in anywhere. I started doing concert photography. So I was being taken away from CrossFit. Cause that was like every weekend or whatever. And I don't, I, I enjoy doing that too. Mm-hmm. Concert photography is just as you fun and exciting job, man. Mm-hmm. as that too, you know, cause you get to meet bands and stuff and you get to see the whole dichotomy of everything. But you know, when COVID come along, it was a godsend, you know, whether people look at it, it's like, Oh, this is horrible. To me, it was a godsend. It slowed me down. Mm-hmm. You know, there are no concerts being shown. Mm-hmm. So I don't get to go to shoot concerts anymore. Although somebody wanted me to come the other day and I went, and they didn't have any lights on. So I'm like, how am I going to wow. shoot you? Yeah. You know? Um, but basically, you know, I quit on myself. I think that's what I did. I, I, I lost faith in me, you know, and I quit on myself and I didn't fit in anywhere. And I just didn't know where I wanted to be. And CrossFit had changed. You know, they'd moved away from regionals. They'd gone to sanctionals. You know, they moved the whole thing to, you know, f- not from February anymore. It was back in November and mm-hmm. stuff. And, so all the timing and training and syncing was out of out of whack, you know, and all the, you know, some events were being canceled because, well, now we have the open in November. I've got to train for that or I've got to go to a sanctional here. So you'd have events that would you'd have big name athletes and they couldn't come. So mm-hmm. they'd have to cancel, you know, and so you would lose money doing that. A lot of the, the, the brands that I shot, you know, Born Primitive had made it to a certain now they're like a key sponsor for Wadapalooza. So they had made it. They have got their, they've, they've, they've now consolidated everything. So they've got their photographer. So they didn't really need me to shoot anymore. So it's just, it, every, everybody grew. Right. You know, I don't hold that against anybody. Everybody needs to grow. Right. Yeah. So it's just one of those things where you have, and that's why I changed the name from Buckethead to Kevin Harrington Images. Okay. Because I figured, and my wife goes, well, that's amazing. You did that while it was COVID. I was like, the best time. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, because you have to evolve. You have to change. Right. And I looked at it as like, when I'm 75 years old, do I still want to be calling myself Buckethead.media? <laughs> that just doesn't come off right. the lips very well, and it's like yeah. just be Kevin Harrington Images. That's yeah. awesome. You know, I can st- I still own every I still own the name. You know, it's, right. I'm the only one. I can I always get like Instagram people. Oh, I just love your guitar playing and all this kind of stuff. It's like I'm not I'm not Buckethead. <laughs> but I mean, it, it it goes back a lot of it goes back to my faith. I'd, I'd lost faith in me, mm-hmm. you know, and then. I didn't know where I fit anymore. CrossFit was changing. You know, I couldn't, I didn't feel like I could offer. I, it wasn't that I didn't feel like I could offer, is that I wanted to offer more and I wanted to move up like everybody else, you know, but everybody, everybody was learning it too. Mm-hmm. Everybody was trying to figure out what their juxtaposition was, where are they going to fall when all this scheme happens and when all this change comes. And so that's just, I mean, it's, it's but now that I'm back at Southern Moon, I'm, it's the best decision I've made. I've made the decision twice and mm-hmm. both times I'm happy that I'm back there. Good. Uh, my numbers are getting back to where I need to be. You know, you don't, you don't, strength comes back easy. It's the cardio part that doesn't, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so as far as numbers as that goes, um, it's the cardio that I'm having to work on more than anything else right now. You know, and I've got to go back and lose weight. I've got to climb the mountain again. 
All right, uh, real quick, we're moving on to our rapid fire questions. All right, all right. Um, how do we do this again, Justin? It's I'm been so odds. long. Yep, I'm your odds. odds. All right, so, I'm evens. Um, what's your favorite CrossFit workout? I wanted to be thirteen point one again. Why? Thirteen point one, and, and, and here's why. That's so far away. What it was, was the very that? first. Yeah, it was the very first it. open I ever did. I was yeah. two months into it. Dave told me I had to do the open. Sure. So it's fourteen thirty. It was it was fourteen it was forty snatches at ninety five pounds. Uh, it was descending and ascending burpees and snatches. And once you got past so many, you could go into the next weight. Mm. Well, I only got ninety nine. I only got ninety nine reps because Dave wouldn't let me go past the ninety five pound snatch. But the funny thing about it was Hudson came. I came out of the gate hot on burpees, and Hudson goes, "You need to slow down." So I every CrossFit open, I always hold up ninety nine. If I can get past ninety nine. I'm good. That's awesome. So, I love that. No, oh, that's cool. <laughs> All right. Uh, what's your favorite CrossFit movement? Um, anything Olympic lifting. What's your favorite Olympic lift? Um, <laughs> I like snatches. I was gonna say I saw that snatch video the other yeah. day you posted. Well, no, and you you have you worked with Dave a lot. I mean, because I it used to go good. take lessons from Dave, and you were always there. Working. It's so about mobility. It's a good technique, and you yeah, you're right. Some natural mobility for That's sure. That's what I always. Dave always me. told me. He goes, "You have the mobility of a three year old." Yep. <laughs> Literally. Soft ankles, man. And I and and I always I always have a hard time with people with that. I was like, "Why can't you not get down in a full squat?" Yeah. I can't go down that far. I'm like, okay. And I, that just blew. I mean, it's not. It's just I can't wrap my head around that for yeah. some reason. I'm the same way, man. I, I struggle with it. I can't sit in a squat without a bar on my back or a bar over my head or a bar on my shoulder. I, I can do it right here for you. Yep. You, you know. probably squat just like no one. We'll do a squat off. Okay. It's amazing to watch little kids just sit there and hover yeah. and play because they're in a perfect squat. Anytime we do a back like, squat, Hudson will make me demo it. He's like, that's, this is what you want. You want to go straight yeah. up, straight down. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's been a study on this, but I want to know at what age does that start to change? Like when what kids age? start sitting? It, it's just amazing. Like I'll see my kids and they're just sitting there playing for an hour with their toy. Well, they, they never play for an hour with their toy. That's oh, an yeah. exaggeration. Well, it's probably Five minutes, the, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so like, you think it's got to be some sometime after you know they hit their first or second growth spurt. Yeah. And their, you know their burn their bones and joints start to solidify. Well, you got that ligament there yeah. in the front that's pulling, and so mm -hmm. it's kind of like. But it's I mean, if you don't exercise it, it yeah. gets loose or it gets very it's tight. It's amazing Correct. to watch. Um, all right. Uh, so your turn. it's my turn. Any good books you've read lately? Um, uh, I've gone through all the Ansel Adams books. I bought those recently. Okay. So, so you're it's, a big it's reader. The portrait. I'm not a big reader, unfortunately. Uh, I would much rather listen to an audio book. Mm -hmm. Um, honestly, I, I just don't, I mean, it's not that I don't have time. It's just that it's nothing really excites me. Mm -hmm. If it's not about photography, I don't really care to read it. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's not about CrossFit, I'm not really, if it's not about Star Wars, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to read it. <laughs> you know, sure. I hate Easy politics way. now. I hate, you know, uh -huh. I hate the state of everything. Uh, so. I think we're all there. Uh, all right. What song do you play when you're ready to rip out a five minute AMRAP? <sighs> Jesus. Um, I did Flog and Molly today for a 25 minute AMRAP. There you go. There you go. But they started making fun of me because it was like, it sounds like they're going to die on a hill in Ireland somewhere. <laughs> um, they don't get it, man. They don't get it. <laughs> it, ha it has, to, it goes and ebbs and flows. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I don't care. No, no Katy Perry. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Nothing against Katy Perry, <laughs> but that for like the longest time, that's all any ever gym ever played was Katy right. Perry. Don't worry about with Reagan Green then. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> I don't really, it doesn't really matter to me. Because right. you shouldn't listen to it anyway. Sure. Uh, all right. Favorite cheat meal? Um, uh, tacos. Oh yeah. Everybody, What's your favorite taco was, place? Yeah. Um, it's actually a uh, it's a place in Charleston called uh, the name escapes me. I like Cantina Seventy Six here in Greenville. They Downtown. have one of those down there. Yeah. I like Taco Boy in Charleston. Taco Boy. Um, but it's, it's the place is not Taco Boy in Charleston. I like to go to. I can't think of the name of it. Best tacos. It'll come to you on your drive home. It will. It always <laughs> does. All right. Uh, tell me something weird about yourself that no one would believe. Um, uh, you ever play the game like five separations of Kevin Bacon or whatever? Mm -hmm. I'm one separation from, well, because of me doing photography, I'm <laughs> something that you wouldn't believe. Uh, Wow, that's a great question. Like, where was he going to go with that one? 
<laughs> well, I mean, I'm one separation from Joe Strummer from The Clash. There you go. Um, That's not hard to believe, though. If you ever watched the movie, like their documentaries, that they had a movie, it was called Rude Boy. Mm-hmm. And so I'm friends with a gentleman. He's a Finney McConnell. He's a lead singer of the Mahones out of Canada. There's Irish punk band. So he's friends with uh, Rude Boy, which is great. I'm sorry, I can't remember his name now. But Rude Boy was in was in the movie with Joe was was with the Clash. He was mm-hmm. like their roadie, and so basically, you know, every time his birthday shows up on Facebook, I'll tell him happy birthday, and every time it shows up on mine, he'll tell me happy. Really? Birthday. That was yeah. cool. So I mean, it's 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 those kind of things. It's those kind of. And then you sit back and you're like, hey, well, this guy was one step from Joe Strummer of mm-hmm. The Clash, you know, but then you can go down a whole wormhole and be like, well, that's also one step from Robert Plant. And that's also two steps from Paul McCartney. And that's, sure. you know, so <laughs> swing awesome. cat. There you go. All right. All right. So if you could be any piece of gym equipment, what would you be and why? Um, I, I have to say a barbell, an Olympic barbell. A spinner. A spinner. Olympic barbell with needle bearings. Mm-hmm. An Alico. Has to I have to be the Alico spinner. There you go. You know, the competition barbell. I could be a trainer bar. <laughs> trainer bars That's get be used Alico. all the time. Mm-hmm. They get strong. Competition yeah, bars are just for show. For yeah. sure. So all right, man. Last question. If you could work out with any non local regional or games CrossFit athlete, who would it be? If I could work out with any? Any non local. So non local. Not Hudson. Or Justin uh, Bell. <laughs> um, geez. Really, just anywhere I drop in, I'm fine. You know, it's mm-hmm. all community. I'm not really, I've, I've like not I said, a fan boy. Uh, not anymore. Well, you've met everybody. You know, I mean, it's not that I've yeah. met everybody, it's just that everybody's the same. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody has their, their, their quirks and everything, and you have to appreciate that. Right. You know, so I, I can't really think of anybody. Uh, well, I think that's a good answer, though. I mean, who, who's would yours be? Who would mine be? Yeah. Pushing it back on me. Uh, it would probably be Scott Panchik. It's a good dude. Or um, Sarah Sigmund's daughter. Of course. Sorry, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Uh, but no, for sure. I, I've always liked Scott Panchik. He's probably my favorite male athlete. Okay, Lucas Parker. Yeah, because I just cool. think Lucas Parker's yeah. funny. I'm, you I'm, and Lucas would get along yeah. well. I've met Lucas. I've met him at Wadapalooza, and he's not very tall. He's we're about the same height. Yeah, and, you know, and we and he was one of the reasons why I decided to grow a beard. Mm-hmm. You know, so Lucas probably is, Lucas Parker. Lucas is one of my like old school OG favorite crossfitters. Let me ask you a question. All right, how do you feel about aging up? Like we've we've watched the first tier of CrossFit athletes. Rich Froning, Lucas Parker, Scott Panchette, Emily Bridgers, uh, mm-hmm. Jen Jones, uh, China Cho, uh, who else? How do you, uh, Camille LeBlanc, Duh, how well, do you feel about those, the new, I mean? So I think, so for me personally, I think it's inspiring. Okay. Right? To see them continue to be competitive and to see them continue to train and, and be able to show. I, to be honest with you, you, you keep mentioning uh, Daniel Petro. Yeah. He inspires me. Yeah. He works out once a day, five a days dude. a week, yeah. and he's still in mm-hmm. amazing shape. He's a dad. He's 30, what, 36, yeah. 37? Yeah. You know, so I would say it inspires me. Um, I still would love to see some, I still would love to see, um, like, I, I'm honestly dying to see Rich and Matt go at it. You know, I, I asked, I asked when I was at Mayhem, I, I asked Rich, I asked him, I said, uh, so you're doing team now. Once you get to Masters, would you ever do it? He's like, no. He said, I'll never go back to a single. And I said, why? He goes, because if I win, well, I was expected to. And if I lose, mm-hmm. well, how could you lose? Mm-hmm. Right. So there's that nothing pressure to gain. on him. He's done, exactly. Yeah. Well, and he I doesn't know, need his, to. His focus is on his family, and that's that's cool. And I mean, and, and look. If anybody has capitalized on of CrossFit, it's rich. He's, He's the first million job. dollar. He literally is the first yeah. million dollar CrossFit he, athlete. Well, he. I mean, you think about it. If there's no rich, there's, there's no, nothing. I don't there's think nothing. CrossFit is what I it agree, is today. I agree, 100%. Mm-hmm. I want to go back. I also love Josh Bridges. I would totally work out with him. JV? Yeah. Day. I can really see he also, get back healthy, man. And he had a high tibiotomy just like I did. So yeah. he's kind of my inspiration. He's been my inspiration from the I've met beginning. Ben Smith, too, on the Go Tape Tour. He's just yeah. a... 
He's a that, good dude. Those are good dudes. Yeah. Well, Ben's the kind of guy you, you see him in like Whole Foods and you never expect that he was a games athlete. He yeah. just looks like just a regular he's dude. Just a, he's just a, he's a hoss, dude. Yeah. There's, but there's, he's not fat. He's just, he's a big dude. He's a big dude, you yeah. know? So, in, what, so like Alec and Ben, Alec's much smaller than Ben, I'm assuming, right? Yeah. So, and then obviously he was a, a gymnastic, I think he yeah, was a Alec, gymnast. Ben, and then Dane. Dane, Dane, yeah, yeah, Dane was down that came down, to and he the, almost did the industry. five minute mile, five hundred pound back squat. Yeah, with Clink, it was close. And I shot Clink too. Clink is that guy is amazing. He was huge. I don't know if he was he's that big. Huge. Was he like two twenty five? He three? played soccer in college, if I'm not mistaken. So he has a running background. Yeah. So mm-hmm. he, if any, I wasn't surprised that he broke it mm-hmm. at all in the least. Yeah. You know, but it's amazing. It's so crazy to me that he's never made it to the games. He's been close. He's, he's, well, he's, he's been so to regionals, close. yeah. But sometimes you have draft horses. Yeah. No, that's and true. So he and drafts. He, you know, he's the draft horse for all the Smiths up there. Well, I love it. Well, I just, I'm excited for the future. I'm excited to see where some of these these young kids who have been growing up in CrossFit now, like Nolan and my kids, and even the kids a little bit older. Mm-hmm. You know, in 10, 15 years, what they're doing. You know, well, and what's what's that impact going to be on? High level sports, right? You know, what is your what are your collegiate athletes look like? When this methodology yeah, really gets see I mean, one, teach it, one, do one, amazing. see one, do one, teach one. Yeah. Yep. Well, so you you look at a lot of college programs and professional. Like I've I've heard a lot about professional football programs and incorporating functional fitness. I think that's what they should put in high schools. Oh, it, huh? it's going to be a high school sport. I guarantee it. Huh? It was. I asked. I asked. Uh, who are the guys that do uh, fun, the fitness? Uh, Danny Mar- oh, Marquez. The other guy. Mm-hmm. I asked him one time in a, in a DM, I was like, do you think they would ever put CrossFit into the Olympics? They're working on it. I don't see it. And he I said, maybe. So. I don't think you can because CrossFit is no the unknowable. Mm-hmm. If you put CrossFit in the Olympics, then you have to tell them what the workout is. Sure. You would know what it is you're going into. And Olympics is all about one dimension. Yeah, it, but that's, that, I mean, I, if, it, if everybody knows the workout, it's fair across the board. And we do that at competitions anyways, unless you're at the games. You know, I, I don't you, know. I personally then you be, hope But then you don't. become more specialized. It's yeah. like, I'm just going to go do burpees all day and do clean jerks all day and yeah. do and do pull-ups Could all day. Be. Yeah, I that definitely I definitely hope it doesn't. I just don't think it would fit. I don't want it to And be. it's the Olympics. But they got snowboarding in there. Yeah, that's all that matters. <laughs> all right, we got to wind this down. Kevin, uh, where Thank can we you find you on social much. Where can they find you on social media? Uh, you can just find me at Kevin Harrington Images on, G- on Instagram. Perfect. Um, you can DM me, call me there. We can set up photos, whatever. Um, but other than that, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, I got KevinHarringtonImages.com. That's sure. about it. All right. So it's actually at KevinHarrington.Images. Okay. There you go. How many times have we had to correct people's handles on here? Oh, come on, <laughs> you only put it in there one time. <laughs> it's true. It's true. No, I'm just messing with you. So, no, again, brother, thank you so much for coming. We uh, appreciate, I appreciate you. Thank you very much. I'm very honored. Honorable sharing some stuff. Yeah. Like, I really, really hope that our listeners are as inspired as we are. So I you have an amazing, amazing story. Yeah. Well, so. thank you very much. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to tell it. Yeah. For sure. Uh, right. For sure. Y'all heard it here. Apogee Podcast. Mm-hmm.